It's another year at the NFL, and after a legendary draft as well as a drama-filled offseason, it's time to look over how each team presents themselves on the field. For anyone that's been subscribed for a while, you'll know that I did this last year in one video, but for anyone that didn't, welcome aboard. Being 12 years and 3 generations into the Nike era, it's been quite the ride from ugly collars and construction, overall complex designs that haven't aged well, and minimalistic garbage that might as well have been made in an hour. However, if a team does change their look, they have to wear it for 5 seasons before being allowed to change it to something else and boy have there been many instances of that in the Nike era. That said there's still plenty of bright spots in Nike's designs. It's been quite the ride to say the least. I think the problem with some of their designs is that you gotta wonder if it was meant for the pros or college level, but that's a discussion we'll get into later in this series. One change coming for every team next year, but available for teams that redesign for this year, is teams being able to have two alternate helmets. Yeah, I guess the whole bullcrap about only allowing one helmet for the sake of head injuries is meaningless, especially when merch is involved. That and you swallow the whistle on some pretty egregious helmet to helmet plays. Then again, the one helmet rule from 2013 to 2021 was just the NFL trying to save their own ass when it came to concussion protocols and CTE. Meanwhile, the NCAA and CFL still allowed teams to wear more than one helmet in a season. And with Nike spending a billion dollars to have the NFL license, you bet that they're gonna come out with as many jerseys as possible, whether or not they require an alternate helmet. A certain new jersey from the Texans is making people people think that the NFL should dip into city jerseys, much like what Nike has done in the NBA and MLB. However, I strongly disagree with that. The NBA City Edition program has been getting stale lately, and half of MLB City Connects are either blue or black, and having a third league using that idea sounds like a terrible idea. That's just oversaturation right there. Frankly, the NFL should employ a throwback initiative like they did in 1994 for the 75th anniversary. Yeah, I know, you're just bringing back what's old and not creating new things, but what other jersey program could you do? Color Rush was a flop, so what new idea could they come up with? If you've got an idea, Idea, mention it in the comments because I'm not creative enough. Now if you've seen my MLB series from earlier this year, this series will be split into multiple parts with each part focusing on each team all throughout the month of September. For the redesigns this year, I did give my first impressions on TikTok and YouTube shorts, but now it's time to give my full impressions as months have gone by and preseason has allowed me to see these in action. For our categories, I've changed things up with garbage being the worst of the worst and the bottom tier. Though we've still got needs of redesign for teams that need to go back to the drawing board, meh for designs I find boring and don't care for, good redesign for all redesigns from the last 10 years since 2014 as I feel a decade should be good enough to judge whether or not Nike was successful at upgrading teams, decent for jerseys that I like but are more than 10 years old but younger than 20 and are, frankly are probably on their way to becoming timeless looks, and classic for designs that are more than 20 years old, are good, and have stood the test of time. If it's team is able to have a look that stands the test of time without becoming stale, it shows what a good brand the team has established for itself, at least in my eyes. Keep in mind that this is all opinion based and we won't always agree. So with all that said, join me throughout September as we rank every 2024 NFL uniform starting on September 1st with the Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears. Introduced in 1920 as a founding member of the NFL, originally as the Decatur Staley's, before becoming the Chicago Staley's the very next year, and finally being renamed to Bears in 1922, as owner, coach, and player George Hallis had his team moved to Wrigley Field to share with the Cubs and emphasize that football players were bigger than baseball players. The Bears' current uniform design traces back to 1950 after the uniforms had evolved up to that point, with the color scheme of navy and orange coming from Hallis's all alma mater, the University of Illinois. There are various updates over the years, with the latest update involving Nike moving the TV numbers from the sleeves to the top of the shoulders in 2012. The home navy is a nice clean look that has endured its longevity, the mark of a great jersey. The shade of blue definitely pops and I do like how moving the TV numbers has allowed the sleeve stripes to be more prominent than they were before 2012. The same goes for the road white which was always paired with matching white pants until 1984 when the blue pants were finally introduced. 
Cruise. Again, another hit. Both jerseys are paired with their glossy navy blue helmet, which rocks. And while migrating the numbers to the top of the shoulders allowed the sleeve stripes to be more prominent, it also makes seeing George House's initials on the left sleeve much easier. Their orange alternate has been divisive ever since its initial debut in 2005. Sure, the team had orange jerseys in their earliest history, but the color can be overwhelming to some. I have been happy ever since its reintroduction in 2018, and thankfully the shade that the Bears use isn't too obnoxious, at least to me. It did become more divisive with the introduction of the alternate orange helmet in 2022, and while I don't mind it, I wouldn't be too sad if the team came out tomorrow and said they were dropping the orange helmet. And in terms of other alternate helmets, I've seen the idea of a white helmet being kicked around and being paired with an all-white look for a white-out or polar bear look. I think that'd be cool, but we'll see if the team ever decides to do that. Their 1936 throwback introduced in 2019 for the team's 100th anniversary has been even more divisive because of one word, stripes. Now yes, stripes were commonplace on football jerseys in the 30s, and the Bears know a thing or two about bad stripe throwbacks, but I feel the hate for this is over-exaggerated. Sure, there's plenty of stripes, but they keep it to the shoulders and the Michigan S3 striped helmet. Like the orange helmet, I wouldn't be too sad if the team replaced this with a different throwback. However, like I mentioned, I think the hate for it is overdone. Lastly and least, their color rush. I don't like it. I never liked the home blue paired with matching pants as a kid, and I still don't like it as an official uniform designation. This just was never meant to be paired with the same colored pants. We last saw this combination in the 2022 season finale, and I think it should never be revisited. So you can call me biased, but the Bears are a classic. Join us tomorrow when we head to the frozen tundra to look at the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers. Debuting in 1919 as an independent team before joining the NFL in 1921, Green Bay is the oldest team in the NFC North. Of course, like many of us know, despite having green in their name, their original color scheme was navy blue and gold from team co-founder, coach, and player Curly Lambeau's alma mater, Notre Dame. Lambeau was also a meat packer employed by the Indian Packing Company and later Acme Packing Company, hence the team name. The navy blue wouldn't be swapped out for green until 1935, though the team would revert back to navy in 1940, and then back to green in 1950. We wouldn't see the look they'd begin to stick with until 1959, which would then be followed by many small updates throughout the decades. Their latest update came in 1989 when they removed the logo from the sleeves. The home green, while simple, has that classic and iconic look as well as the road white, both paired with their glossy golden yellow helmet, even if I think they'd look better on fire. Their 1950 throwback uniform, introduced in 2021, replaced their previous ugly navy throwback back which hadn't seen action since 2019 and it's okay they do use their current dark green on this instead of the more kelly green shade of the 1950 version and i feel nike chose this specific look for the matching pants if i hadn't known that this was based on a previous look i'd immediately think it was a color rush uniform but to be fair if this was paired with their regular pants it looked less distinct even with the logo missing on the helmet it's definitely their best throwback ever but that doesn't say much Starting in 2016, the Packers gain a color rush, but like the Bears' color rush, it's nothing special. It's just their white road with matching white pants that don't get used elsewhere. Whoopee. For this year, Green Bay finally listened to me and added an alternate white helmet to go with the color rush. It looks okay, though part of me wishes the face mask was a different color. Maybe have the face mask be yellow, cause going all white with no yellow gives off 2017 to 2019 Rams vibes. If there's one criticism that everyone's laid out against Green Bay, it's their uniform template. They're still using the Reebok fabric and template. Ever since Nike's takeover in 2012, the Packers have opted to not use any of Nike's templates, and as a result, the jerseys are looking older and older each day. Yeah, I like my Reebok jerseys too, but I'm also not a billion dollar team. The team refuses to answer as to why, but frankly, I think using Nike's Fuse template would help elevate these uniforms. But regardless, the Packers are still a classic. Tomorrow is time to head indoors to look at the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings. Originally introduced in 1961 with their color scheme of purple and golden yellow and a name inspired by the Scandinavian American culture in the state, the Vikings are the youngest franchise in the NFC North and their uniforms have been in evolution since then. Nike redesigned their uniforms in 2013 after the ugly over-designed 2006 Reebok redesign. Yuck! Thankfully this is a major improvement. The home purple is elegant with the number font matching the word mark on the front, even if it bothers me how double 
numbers are asymmetrical. That and I prefer this jersey paired with the white pants as opposed to pairing it with the purple pants. I can only stand so much purple. The same goes for the white road and pairing it with purple pants is my preferred choice because of the color breakup. As for the white on white, it's slightly better than all purple, but honestly don't care for it. Both are paired with their matte purple helmet, which works for what these two uniforms are going for. We'll get into that one in a bit. Last year, their color rush was MIA, and this year confirms that it's dead with the introduction of their Winter Warrior uniform meant for Christmas games. Since 2022, the Vikings have been wearing all white at home when they play on Christmas weekend, and it was fine, but now they've got a dedicated look to it, and I don't like it. I know, I'm in the minority. I didn't make a TikTok about it because I think it's boring and possibly a bad omen, plus I didn't think it made for good content. The combination of white, silver, and purple is decent on paper, especially with the alternate white helmet, but this is BORING! The number font is similar to their regular font, but instead looks like someone tried to copy it from memory. The silver sleep stripes are okay, but aren't as dynamic as the horn-shaped stripes on their regulars. But the biggest sin for me is the lack of shoulder numbers. You've got all this blank space, what's it gonna be used for? Ads? I hope not. I hate this trend of leaving the shoulders blank and you'll see more of this as the series goes on. Their throwback introduced last year harkens back to the 60s and 70s and while the jerseys pull this off with their spectacular block numbers, the helmet doesn't. Instead of using a glossy helmet to pair this up with, like used back then, Minnesota opted to modify their regular matte helmet for this and frankly it ruins it for me. The uniform doesn't look as distinct as it should be, hopefully this is rectified next year with a second alternate helmet. Overall, with this design being more than 10 years old, the Vikings have been bumped up to decent and I hope they stick with this look for years to come. That said, I hope their alternates gain improvements as the years go on. Come back tomorrow for the finale of the NFC North with the Detroit Lions. Detroit Lions. You really made people think you were going to the Super Bowl. Well, except me. I knew deep down that you'd blow it. At least you got rid of your uniforms originally introduced in 2017 with its bland style, gray color rush, and putting in owners and initials on your left sleeve while division rivals still had that, seriously ripping off within the division. Anyways, the Lions were established in 1930 as the Portsmouth Spartans in Ohio before moving to Detroit and becoming the Lions in 1934, a name as then owner George A. Richards wanted to assemble a team to be quote, the king of the NFL and as a tie into the Detroit Tigers. Little did he know his team would become the oldest active franchise to have never been to a Super Bowl. After the move to Detroit, Richards and his wife changed the color scheme from purple and gold to the more familiar Honolulu blue and silver. Apparently the name comes from the blue waves in Hawaii. It was the 30s. Like the Bears and Packers, the Lions uniforms have been a constant evolution, though Detroit did follow trends from Reebok and Nike, for better or for worse, until redesigning their uniforms this year. Their new set harkens back to the 90s Barry Sanders style, and frankly, this was the refresh Detroit needed. It was time to go back to what already worked. You're one of the oldest teams in the league and it was time you showed it. There are nicknames for each jersey when they were first shown, but does it really matter in the end? Not in my eyes. The home blue is superb and I think it is the best of the three. Some don't like the blue face mask instead of the silver, but with what they're going with, this is alright. The white road is also good, though it has this added word mark on the front which isn't on the home jersey. It's still nice regardless, but the blue pants? Yeah, just stick with silver pants. Even in the 90s they look bad. I don't know exactly why, but something about the Lions wearing blue pants never felt right. They generally belong in the garbage. Oh yeah, the white outlook. It still exists. Yeah, I don't care for this look no matter the incarnation. Both jerseys are paired with their metallic silver helmet featuring the 2009 update of the logo, which is the best that the logo has ever looked after just being the outline of a lion for the longest time. And finally, the black alternate with their blue helmet. This is not the same blue helmet from last year. That one was metallic and featured a throwback logo, whereas this is glossy blue with the logo in black. In terms of the jersey, not only does this beat the boring gray color rush from last year, but it's also a major improvement over their original black jerseys from the mid-2000s. It has been criticized as looking like a Panthers ripoff and maybe... Yeah, I feel there's enough distinction. What helps make this work more than the old black jersey is emphasizing blue more with the black as opposed to silver via the helmet and pants. Because if you ask me, the Lions old black uniforms look like the Panthers from Wish or even a bad eBay knockoff. As if the current Panthers weren't already from Wish or the dark side of eBay. And hey, it looks as good as a black color rush and honestly kind of nice with the blue pants. Maybe those blue pants do have a good use after all. I do find it kind of funny how people wanted the Lions to bring back 
black despite the original black jersey hailing from the Matt Millen era, a period that Lions fans would rather forget ever happened. They've kept their late 50s throwbacks which were reintroduced in 2017 and of the four, this is the weakest in their lineup because of how boring these are. Sure it's accurate but this is a case that makes you wonder if the source material was worth revisiting. I still stand by saying it looks like a practice jersey. So overall the Lions succeeded and have been promoted to good redesign. That concludes the NFC North, tomorrow we begin the NFC East with the New York Giants. New York Giants. Established in 1925, the New York Football Giants are the oldest team in the NFC East and have always sported their color scheme of dark blue and red and take a wild guess where the team name came from. Their look has evolved since the 20s with their current design arriving in 2000s after sporting giants on their helmets from 1976 to 1999 as the team didn't feel having New York's initials made sense after moving to East Rutherford, New Jersey, a New York suburb. These uniforms were meant to evoke the 1961 to 1974 look, though the road jersey would change in 2005 to what it is now. I did give positive feedback on New York's jerseys last year, but now, yeah, I can see why people aren't too fond of them. Now, I know the Giants are known as Big Blue, but I've grown tired of seeing their blue home just be one block of blue with nothing to break it up. Not even sleeve stripes or at least the logo on the sleeves. This jersey used to be paired with gray pants until 2019 when they were replaced with white pants after the team flip-flopped between gray and white pants from 2013 to 2018. I really do not care for the use of white pants. I think that's what adds to the overall blandness. The white road is better in not only having more going on, but also has plenty of red like how the Tigers road jersey is full of orange. That said, the white pants strike again as the team started pairing this with white pants in 2021 and fully replaced the gray pants in 2022. I'm really not into this combination. The color is being sucked out. Both uniforms are paired with their metallic blue helmet with NY on both sides, easily the best part of these uniforms. They did drop their color rush, which harkened back to the 80s, which is a shame since they finally got it right last year, pairing it up with the alternate navy blue helmet. Oh well, at least the home version of their 80s throwback survived and was what the alternate helmet was originally introduced for back in 2022. Most agree this is the Giants' best look, but for those who want to be their permanent look again? I don't know. It's nice, but honestly, let's leave it in the past. New for this year, their century red throwbacks, which are a mix of their looks from the 20s and 30s, and for those, I like the helmet. It's Michigan, except they swapped the maze for red. The rest, there's a reason most designs from this time period don't translate onto a modern uniform template. I already went over why it's hideous during the offseason, but for those who didn't see that, I'm not into the Canadian's look of the jersey. The tan pants are hideous and you cannot swag out in this. Overall, the Giants uniforms are lacking and I'm not a fan of the tweaks that the team has done over the last decade. I think a redesign is in order. I don't know exactly what they'd come up with, but frankly anything would be better than what they have now, assuming they don't resort to minimalism. Come back tomorrow when we look at the ultimate in villainy, the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys. I was a week and a half away from turning a year old the last time the Cowboys made the Super Bowl. Think about that. Established in 1960 as a knee-jerk response to the American Football League and the Dallas Texans, the Cowboys have worn navy blue and white since then, with silver added in 1964. And ever since 1964, the white home road screw it jersey has remained basically the same with last names added in 1970, while the navy blue jersey has endured more change with this iteration being in the team's lineup since 1996. Maybe the existence of this jersey explains their bad luck. I say that as the Cowboys are the only team in the league to wear white at home without any influence on the weather. At least for a Florida team like Miami or Tampa Bay, they're outside and have the sun beating down on them for an entire game. Here, the Cowboys have been playing under a retractable roof since 2009. I realize the reason for this is because original team president and GM Tech Schramm didn't want his team to die in the Texas heat in early season games at the Cotton Bowl, but mostly so fans could see the opponent's main color instead of every game being blue versus white. However, over the decades with the advent of cable, internet, and streaming, there's no need for it, but the Cowboys must keep up with tradition. However, lately, the team has worn blue at home for select games. 
which I'll commend them. The white jersey is iconic for a reason, and it is absolutely clean. The blue jersey is okay, but doesn't get too much exposure. There is a rumor that the Cowboys blue jersey has always been jinxed, which is why you'll see other teams sometimes wear white at home to quote-unquote jinx the Cowboys, stemming from Dallas losing Super Bowl V in 1971 to the Baltimore Colts, where the Cowboys were the designated home team, as well as losing the 1968 divisional round at Cleveland. Both times Times had Dallas wearing blue before Super Bowls allowed the home team to pick whatever they wanted to wear. Both jerseys are paired with their metallic silver helmet, which, like it or not, is iconic and recognizable throughout the globe. Their color rush, originally introduced in 2015, is meant to be a throwback to the white jerseys the team wore in 1994 as a sort of 90s version of their 1960 jerseys. It is better than that 90s version by virtue that the stars aren't cartoonishly large, and since 2022, they've paired this with their alternate white helmet. This has grown on me over the years, and now I don't mind it. Their 1960 throwbacks made a comeback in 2022 and have been worn on Thanksgiving since, and frankly, thank God, because this has always been a sweet look. Oh yeah, why their name is the Cowboys. I think everyone knows the state of Texas well enough by now. So overall, compared to how I felt about them last year, the Cowboys have been promoted to classic, but frankly, they need to cut the superstitious bullcrap because, as the old saying goes, if you think you're jinxed, you're gonna fail. Maybe if you cut the crap, you get past the divisional round for once. Tomorrow we're heading to the city of brotherly love to check out the Philadelphia Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. First established in 1933, the Eagles were originally blue and yellow, the colors from the Philadelphia flag. Eh, it could be worse. Though blue also made sense as the team name spawned from President Franklin Roosevelt's 1933 New Deal, specifically the National Recovery Act's Blue Eagle. Green wouldn't pop up until 1935, and 1937 would see Kelly Green completely replaced blue in the team's lineup. Philly's look would then evolve over the years while wearing Kelly Green, including the 1943 Steagles that came into existence due to World War II, until the most dramatic redesign in the team's history in 1996. In addition to the 90s giving us goofy uniforms, there was also the beginning of the dark gritty reboots, and the Eagles were one of them. Kelly Green was replaced with Midnight Green and black was added to their color scheme. It has had tweaks since then with the word mark, first in 2003, and now this year. Personally, this new word mark doesn't match the rest of the setup with its lack of outlining, let alone a drop shadow. It makes me think that this is possibly hinting at a redesign. We'll have to wait and see. I have always been a fan of their green home and white road, though I love their black alternate, which has been the team lineup in one form or another since 2003 and became the team's color rush in 2016. It was paired with a black helmet in 2022, but I never cared for it in the team went back to pairing this with the regular metallic green helmet. Speaking of helmets, all three are paired with their glossy midnight green helmet which is always rocked with the eagle wings on the side. With the NFL's new helmet rule, I can see the black helmet also returning but frankly, I could care less for it since the green they use is pretty dark as is so it doesn't look that much different. Last year saw the return of their Kelly Green throwbacks, specifically the version from 1985 to 1995. It is beautiful and you can't beat that Kelly Green but what if they were to throw back to 1970 to 1973 where they had white helmets? Okay, yeah, that was a terrible stretch of time for the team, but at least those uniforms would be something different for them to try. I don't know. I don't work for Nike. So overall, the Eagles are without a doubt a classic. Tomorrow, we conclude the NFC East with the Washington Redacteds. Washington Commanders. Previously known as the Redskins, the team originally started in 1932 in Boston with Braves being their original name, as they shared Fenway Park with the baseball team of the same name and featured a color scheme of blue and gold until changing to Redskins the next year in 1933 to have a different name than the Baseball Braves while maintaining a Native American nickname, which of course is when Red was introduced until 1936 when Burgundy replaced Red. The name would stick once the team moved to the nation's capital in 1937, with 2019 being the last year of Redskins due to the name being cancelled. Washington would go under as the Washington football team in 2020 and 2021 until previous owner and known scumbag Dan Snyder could come up with a new name and boy did he choose the blandest and most generic name ever. Commanders, really? We're really raiding team names from the AAF as if it wasn't bad enough having the Indians raid the XFL's name library. I do find it hilarious how FedEx as well as other sponsors threatened to pull their sponsorship if the Redskins name wasn't changed and yet only just this year did FedEx pull their name off of their 
decrepit stadium. And to go with the rebrand in 2022, we also got new uniforms which summarize everything I hate about modern uniform design. Washington's look before 2022 was very classy with minimal change since 1972 after evolving through the years, though the absence of the logo in 2020 was like seeing the villain in Madam Web dressed up like a great value Spider-Man, for all five of you that saw that movie, not me. Like the Cleveland Indians, any and all character became lost after the logo was stripped and what they thought to replace it with is forgettable at best. That said, I find it interesting that a shirt Dan Quinn sported in the offseason has the Redskins feathers with the W which adds some character, but let's not get our hopes up. This home burgundy looks like it was made in five minutes before class started, and the white road has a gradient on the shoulders and numbers for frankly no reason, it just looks like the graphics are flaking off. I also don't understand the lack of TV numbers on the shoulders when there's more than enough space to put them. At least it would help break things up. I guess the military inspired number font is okay, but nothing else here says military to me, so they look out of place. At least the three stars from the DC flag on here would give this some military flavor. The one positive I have is the team name on the home jersey and the city on the road jersey, like in baseball. Both are paired with a matte burgundy helmet and a bland W logo. Could they have at least even bothered to have the face mask in another color besides burgundy? And on top of that, add a white stripe for the yellow to go in between to help break up all this color, and give the pants some stripes for crying out loud. Speaking of the pants, there is one positive for this year. The return of the golden yellow pants. They hadn't been seen in the team's lineup since 2018 after returning in 2010 from a 32 year absence. And thankfully the new ownership saw the sense in bringing them back. The addition of yellow definitely helps break up things and gives the uniforms a pop of color. This black color rush is really something else. I dare say they look like the Steelers from Wish. And for whatever reason they kept the football team style of numbers on the helmet. If they were to pair the yellow pants up with this jersey, they definitely look even more like Pittsburgh. Sure it's different, but different doesn't necessarily mean good. Is it a shock that I find these to be garbage? It's sad that the team isn't allowed to change uniforms until after 2026, so in the meantime, we have to endure this crap. That concludes the NFC East, and if you've survived, let's go party and go over the New Orleans Saints. New Orleans Saints. Established on All Saints Day of 1966, New Orleans began play in 1967 with a color scheme scheme of black and old gold with ever-evolving uniforms. The current incarnation of the black home arrived in 1996 and has been a beautiful look, though I prefer the gold pants over the black pants personally, but pairing it with black pants on its own is okay, just not my preferred look. The current road white debuted in 1999 with black numbers after sporting gold numbers from 96 to 98, and again I prefer this with gold pants rather than the black pants. They just look like sweatpants when paired with either of these. The black pants are just straight black and lack a stripe along the side, unlike the gold pants. Both uniforms do, however, sport the team's recognizable metallic gold helmet with the fleur-de-lis on it. The white road also has optional white pants, which are okay, though like Detroit, I don't care for them, and they do serve to be there when the team can't wear their all-white color rush, which was originally introduced in 2016. This is meant to homage the team's white road from 1967 to 1969, albeit with white pants and it was always pretty solid. In 2022, it gained a black alternate helmet to reference 1969, and I've gotten used to it by now. Though after seeing New Orleans wear this against Atlanta, who were donning their own throwbacks, it really supports my argument of the NFL having an initiative where both teams wear throwbacks in a game. They did also bring back their 1967 to 1969 home throwback in 2022, after last being seen in 2016, and they are also a nice clean look, though I'd like to see a darker gold helmet to be paired with this, crossing my fingers that it happens next year. So overall, the Saints are a classic in my eyes. Don't lose your temper, we're heading to Charlotte tomorrow to check out the Carolina Panthers. Carolina Panthers. Arriving on the scene in 1995, the Panthers are the youngest franchise in the NFC South and have basically looked the same since their inception with one minor difference, the TV numbers on top of the shoulders. From 1995 to 
2019, the shoulder numbers were legible, but starting in 2019, they've shrunk to the point of wondering why they even bothered putting them there. Seriously, am I the only one who noticed this? It's quite the coincidence that once the Panthers started using a Nike template instead of using the Reebok template like the Packers, the shoulder numbers began to shrink. I don't know why that's the case. There's plenty of designs older than the Panthers that still look fine on Nike's various templates, so who knows what the deal is. As for the team name, original owner Jerry Richardson chose it to represent strength and power that his son came up with. The home black is still good regardless even if the team hasn't been, whether it's paired with matching black pants, silver pants, or white pants. The same goes for the road white and all those pant combinations, however we did get to see it paired with the blue pants, which was interesting I guess, but nothing to go crazy about. Their blue alternate has always been beautiful ever since debuting in 2002, though they've had it paired with matching blue pants from time to time as their color rush since 2015 and we saw it come back last year. Yeah, not a fan of the all blue look unless you want to pretend they're all cookie monster. All three uniforms are paired with their metallic silver helmet, which is fantastic. However, optionally, the all black look can be paired with a matte black helmet for the full-on blackout and it is stunning! That said, we were teased a black helmet, blue jersey, and black pants setup last year, but it never happened. Not sure why. So overall, the Panthers are a classic, though I suspect David Tepper has a redesign in line soon. I just know they'll screw it up like Tepper has done to the team. Come back tomorrow in A-Town, where we'll examine the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta Falcons. Ever since debuting in 1966, the Falcons have flip-flopped between emphasizing black and emphasizing red. They were black from 1966 to 1970, then red from 71 to 89, back to black from 90 to 02, had both from 03 to 08, were full-time red from 09 to 19, and since 2020 have been black. <sighs> So aside from switching between two colors, why the name Falcons? Last I checked, the Georgia State bird was the Thrasher. Well, the name was suggested by a school teacher named Julia Elliott as the Falcon is proud and dignified with great courage and fight. It never drops its prey. It is deadly and has a great sporting tradition. Now we can rag on the team's lack of success after reading that, but I digress. The home black feels plain, especially when paired with matching black pants. The same can be said for the road white and it's all white look. This was meant to be an evolution of the team's Reebok redesign from 2003, but it doesn't warrant a reaction any stronger than eh. I think I would have preferred to have had sleeve stripes instead of the logo on the sleeve to help break up both colors. Everything's just too plain otherwise. That and the number font is comically huge despite being based on a bird's claw which are anything but chunky. And is the big ATL word mark absolutely necessary across the front? I don't think so. Uniforms that do this typically don't last long. Both are paired with their matte black helmet, which I never cared for. Honestly, I don't see why they had to make it matte when there was nothing wrong with the helmet being glossy. If anything, the glossy version looks better. It's as if they were obligated to go matte since it's required for a stereotypical Nike design to have this. Last year, they got rid of their ugly red to black gradient jersey, though I'm still anticipating a solid red jersey in this template as an apology of sorts to both fans and the general public. As a result, their only alternate is a throwback to their 1966 to 1970 uniforms with a red helmet and black jersey. Previously, this was a throwback to the 90s look before alternate helmets were allowed again. It's nice, though I can't help but desire a red throwback more as the red helmet always looked mismatched with the black jersey, even if this was accurate, and for something bright in this second dark reboot. Overall, this is meh. Frankly, some tweaks to this could go a long way, but the team has to wait until next year for that. Tomorrow we will conclude the NFC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. When the team originally debuted in 1976, they were creamsicle orange and white. It was a color scheme that screamed the 70s and something found in a freezer. Fun fact, they were an AFC team for just 1976 before going to the NFC in 1977 where they've remained since. They would stay the same until a full rebrand in 1997 to red and pewter and since then, they'd keep that look from 1997 
2011 to 2013, then have that hideous first Nike redesign from 2014 to 2019 which defined the Jameis era, followed by having the good sense to go back to that previous look in 2020. That said, they kept the revamped logo introduced in 2014 as opposed to the 1997 version. The team name stemmed from pirates inhabiting the Florida Gulf Coast in the 17th century, and the name just rolls off the tongue. The home red is gorgeous, though I prefer it with the pewter pants and the white pants. The white pants paired with this always look wrong. Plus, no one else in the league has pewter, so that's pretty unique. This was nice to go back to basics instead of the overly busy previous look. Plus, the block numbers will always be more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes than clock numbers. The road white is also fantastic, though it looks fine paired with either colored pants. They do have an all pewter color rush, and honestly, this is my least favorite in their lineup. Pewter's fine as a secondary color, but as the main color on a jersey, it looks like the red jersey got burnt. And am I the only one who knows that they've worn this on the road as much as they've worn it at home? Of all jerseys, I didn't think it'd be this. If the team announced tomorrow that they were retiring the pewter jersey, I don't think many people would shed a tear or be too disappointed. Their cream skull throwback returned last year after last being seen in 2012 and it is beautiful. Okay, maybe beautifully ugly, but you don't see this shade get used these days. I wish they'd wear this more than once, especially with these alternate white helmets with Bucko Bruce on both sides. So overall, the Bucks remain a good redesign. Let's head out to Tinseltown tomorrow to begin the NFC West with the Los Angeles Rams. Los Angeles Rams, congratulations, you made a first round selection for the first time since Obama's final months in office. And like the pick from that year, you selected someone named Jared. Interesting. This franchise was first established in 1936 in a different American Football League as the Cleveland Rams, but then joined the NFL the very next year in 1937. The team name was chosen because their original head coach Damon Wetzel was a fan of the Fordham Rams, and the team was also originally red and dark blue. Royal blue and golden yellow would show up in 1939, a color scheme the team would keep when they moved to Los Angeles in 1946 despite winning the 1945 NFL championship due to losing money, poor attendance, and knowing that the then up-and-coming Browns would have the attention of the Cleveland populace. And keep in mind, this was a decade before the Giants and Dodgers moved to the West Coast. After the move to LA, their uniforms would evolve and even briefly replace blue with red for just 1949. The team would drop gold and yellow in 1964, as well as feature a darker blue, where the team strictly became a blue and white team sporting white horns on the helmet, the era of the fearsome foursome. Gold and yellow would return in 1973, and the team would have this look even when they moved to St. Louis in 1995, with 1999 being the last year of royal blue and golden yellow going out with a Super Bowl win. The Rams would have their own dark gritty reboot in 2000, sporting navy blue and gold with a number tweak in 2001. This is the look that defined the St. Louis Rams. Of course, as we all know, the team would move back to LA in 2016 and thus began some bizarre combinations from 2017 to 2019, a subject that honestly warrants its own video. So so in 2020, to coincide with the opening of SoFi Stadium, the Rams got new uniforms with a color scheme of royal blue and soul yellow which were immediately hated. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't one of them. However, as time went on, I've gotten used to most of it. The home blue is fine, though I don't care for the white to yellow gradient on the numbers and is the only one of these three jerseys that does this. Frankly, they should have just stayed solid colored. Besides that, I dig the horns on the sleeves being maintained, though they could have fit some TV numbers on the shoulders. And like many, I could do without the name tag styled word mark on the front, something that you can see across their current lineup, though many have theorized that it's a placeholder for the day the NFL puts ads on jerseys. God help us all when that happens. I do like it paired with the soul yellow pants as that feels the most right and for that pop of color. The white pants are okay with it and I'd say it's acceptable, but man do they need to throw the blue pants into a fire pit. Yeah, I realize this is far from the only time the Rams have had matching blue pants, but not all instances are created equal. I'm not a fan of how it turns this uniform into a giant block of blue. The road jersey was originally introduced as an alternate in 2021 before becoming the main road jersey in 2022, meant to be a modern update of what the team wore when they won Super Bowl 34 against the Titans, and then they wear these when they won Super Bowl 56. Other than that, it's basically a white version of the home jersey. Like the home set, I prefer this with the yellow pants, though it looks okay when paired with the blue pants, I guess. It's also what 
warmed me up to this design when this jersey debuted. Now, they're alternate. This was originally the road jersey before being demoted to alternate status in 2022, and it's easy to see why. First off, this is meant to be bone white, and I don't know anyone that's gotten used to this. The color looks like it's been infinitely stained with sweat, and while there are TV numbers on the sleeves, they look so tacked on that they might as well have been an afterthought. It looks acceptable with the sole yellow pants, but with blue or matching bone white? Forget it. The team stated last year that they're not gonna just introduce an alternate for the sake of it, and yet they'll keep this pathetic thing in the team's lineup. All three jerseys are paired with their metallic royal blue helmet, which, while it's nice, I think I preferred when the Rams had a darker helmet. However, this is still nice on its own and works with what the Rams have put out. If you ask me, ditch the bone white and replace it with a sole yellow color rush like what the Rams had before, and then bring back the throwback. There, two alternate uniform slots filled right there, and any and all fans are happy. Nike, call me. I've got more ideas. I do still stand by saying the Rams are a good redesign, though another part of me is thinking that because they're not doing alternates, the team is planning to redo their uniforms again. Well, this is the last year they're contractually obligated to wear this set before they can change them. Tomorrow, we're going to travel to the Northwest to look over the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks, the other team to debut in 1976 alongside the Bucks, Seattle is the youngest franchise in the NFC West. And much like how Tampa was in the AFC for 76 and then the NFC from 77 onward. The Seahawks starred in the NFC for their inaugural season before being moved to the AFC the very next year. This move was done so both expansion teams could play each other twice and every team that both conferences had to offer at least one time. Yeah, it sounds silly and would never happen today. As for the name, it beat out such name as Mariners, Olympics, Evergreens, and Sockeyes, as the name was both indigenous to the area and aggressive. Anyway, Seattle's original color scheme was royal blue, green, and silver, not too different from what the Vancouver Canucks had at the time. The jerseys would look like this until a tweak in 1983 where the TV numbers migrated from the sleeves to the top of the shoulders. This look would remain until 2002 to coincide with the team's move back to the NFC so the AFC had room for the Texans and divisional realignment as well as Reebok taking over the NFL license. Their 2002 redesign was okay, but a needed redesign had happened in 2012 where Nike made their first full redesign under their new contract. The navy blue stopped being muted, and there were these new uniform designs that the world had only ever seen Oregon football don. And has it held up over a decade later? Well, I do think the home blue is gorgeous as well as the white road. I like the number font used as well as all the details going on, especially compared to how basic the previous font looked by comparison. They do also have a word mark off to the side in the front, which I feel is what the Rams were trying to copy, but at least in Seattle's case, it blends into the design rather than being a distraction. I dig the pop of green on the shoulders of the home jersey, and I think the same way with the blue on the shoulders of the road jersey. I do prefer the home jersey with the matching navy pants. It looks more complete rather than when they pair it with gray pants. The road jersey, however, is fine no matter the color of the pants. Both jerseys are paired with their matte blue helmet, which I still think is gorgeous and matches perfectly with this design. Then we get to their green color rush introduced in 2016, which most people hate, but I'm not one of them. I still believe this fulfills the assignment set forth by Color Rush, and since the team already was wearing matching pants with their regular uniforms, of course turned to the secondary color. I'm generally in favor of alternates like these because it just adds a bit of zest to a team's uniform lineup, rather than having just a home and a road. Their 1983 throwback introduced last year replaced the Wolfpack Grey alternate, and yeah, this was epic to see brought back. My only gripe is that because of the Nike Views collar, the stripes are cut off. That and why didn't you wear these? against the 49ers when they wore their throwbacks. It's still a gorgeous uniform, and overall, the Seahawks have been promoted to decent. Tomorrow, we're going to settle down in Phoenix to look over the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals originally debuted in 1898 in Chicago as the Morgan Athletic Club, started by a house painter and plumber named Chris O'Brien, making them both the oldest team in the NFC West and the entire league, though not the oldest football team in North America. That honor belongs to the Toronto Argonauts. 
The team would change its name to the Racine Normals in 1899 due to playing at Normal Park on South Racine Avenue on the south side until changing to Racine Cardinals in 1901 due to the team reusing faded University of Chicago Maroons jerseys and calling the faded coloring Cardinal Red. That's how the legend says it anyways. They'd be the Racine Cardinals until disbanding in 1906 due to a lack of competition as the Cardinals were an independent team at that time. However, a new Racine Cardinals picked up the slack in 1913 and claimed the team's history and colors in the process. Of course, when the Cards joined the NFL in 1920, the team was sporting maroon and gold. Navy blue would be added in 1932 and the red became brighter in 1935. The team would be like this throughout their tenure in Chicago even after moving into Comiskey Park with the White Sox. Blue would be dropped in 1956 and the uniforms would start looking more familiar in 1958. By 1959, the writing was on the wall for the team as the Bears were more popular and the team even played two games in Minneapolis. In 1960, the team moved south to St. Louis to start fresh after poor attendance, poor play, losing money, and being overshadowed by another team in the city. Did I also mention that the NFL encouraged it so they'd be able to claim St. Louis before the up-and-coming American Football League could? Now, there were two teams in St. Louis called the Cardinals, and they played in the same stadiums too. Meanwhile, the team finally added a logo to the helmet in 1960, and that's where the uniform evolution started to come full swing. In 1988, the team moved to Arizona to become the Phoenix Cardinals due to Bush Stadium's age and the fact that it's warmer in Arizona than it is in Missouri. The team would later take up the state's name in 1994. The team's uniforms would get a modern redesign in 2005 from Reebok, which looked cool at the time but didn't age well as the 2010s became the 2020s, leading to this redesign introduced last year. I'd compare this to NBA redesigns that were similar to their previous look except worse, such as the Cavs and Rockets. Or better yet, they're like some college football redesigns that Nike made for this year such as Baylor and TCU, both being just blocks of the same color and nothing else. Now I do acknowledge that the red jersey being different from the white jersey is historical for the team, but it looked stupid back then and it's even more stupid now to recreate it, especially this poorly. The home red is one huge block of red with only a giant Arizona word mark to break it up. I do like that they kept the TV numbers on the shoulders, but there's nothing else going on here. This isn't the only redesign like this that Nike has done, but I'm amazed that they erased designs running up along the body, in this case the Reebok piping, and replaced it with Jack Squat. Really? Not even some sleeve stripes? Well, they are on the white road, but that's all this jersey has. Even seeing this in action, they look incomplete. I do lol seeing that they put cardinals on the sleeve stripes as if they pasted it on at the last minute, or were reluctant to put initials there like the bears. Both jerseys are paired with their familiar matte white helmet, which has some speckle on it that you'll never notice, and their cardinal logo first introduced in 2005 with added metallic sheen and shading. It's probably the only good thing going for these uniforms. Their black alternate introduced alongside is based on the Color Rush version of the previous black jersey and paired with a black helmet, but is otherwise just a black version of the white jersey. I realize that the Cardinals have been due for a redesign in this decade, but this? This screams last minute. And you know the worst part? They only ever paired these three uniforms with matching pants, which amplifies the blandness. Why do they all have to be paired with the matching pants? Wearing different colored pants would at least break up the monotony, and with no second alternate like a certain throwback to even bump their rating up in the slightest, these uniforms are garbage. This is utter trash, and Nike should be ashamed of themselves as well as the Cardinals for looking at these and giving Nike the thumbs up. I know you haven't done much as a franchise, but you you didn't have to literally put nothing on your jerseys. Thank God things are looking up tomorrow when we check out the San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco 49ers. Last year's Super Bowl runner-up debuted in 1946 in the All-America Football Conference, or AAFC for short, and named after the 1849 California Gold Rush, but the Niners ironically didn't sport gold in their first season. There was gold in 1947 and 57, but that never lasted longer than two seasons until 1964. I wasn't able to find a concrete reason as to why they're red aside from it looking cool, but most speculate it's because of the Golden Gate Bridge. Their design would evolve over the decades until a redesign in 1996. The red became darker and the numbers were more complex and had a drop shadow like the eagles and dolphins. This design remained until a back-to-basics redesign
design for 2009, bringing back solid colored block numbers and simpler stripes. They'd be tweaked in 2022 with a new word mark and adding a third sleeve stripe to match the Montana days, but I'm not counting that as a full-on redesign. I mean, would you? I didn't think so. The home red is a simple clean look that is loved by many outside of the NFC West and the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's straightforward and the metallic gold on the helmet helps you remember the gold rush unlike your history teacher. The white road is equally as gorgeous with both being paired with fake gold pants. These are darker than what New Orleans wears and after seeing fashion jerseys using this gold, probably best to keep this color below the waist. In 2018, the Niners introduced white throwbacks to the 1994 season, which the themselves were throwbacks to 1955, and these replaced the hideous black color rush that the team had. These throwbacks always looked nice, but like what the Giants would later do, San Fran introduced the red home throwback in 2021, and it looks as great as it did in 1994. Now last year I called this classic, but since we're not at 20 years of this design, it's decent. Don't fret Niners fans, it'll get to classic in 5 years. That concludes the NFC, come back tomorrow where we start the AFC off with the Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. Originally debuting in 1933 as the Pittsburgh Pirates, the Steelers have been black and gold and yellow in reference to the Pittsburgh City flag. The name would change in 1942 Steelers in reference to Pittsburgh being the Steel City. This team is the oldest franchise in their division and went through several different looks in their first handful of decades, with some even bearing a resemblance to the Hamilton Tiger Cats now that I look at it. Though the team would settle on their iconic block numbered look in 1968. The team would keep this look until 1997 when the number font was changed to match the number font on the helmet and Pittsburgh has stuck with this since. Honestly, still seeing it today on the black home and white road absolutely works. It's quite timeless even. Their color rush introduced in 2016 is also a throwback to their early days and unlike other Steelers throwbacks of that time period, this is at least decent to look at. Now, I think a yellow helmet should be paired with this much like they did in the late 2000s, but maybe they have plans to introduce that the next year or so, we'll have to wait and see. And of course, they've got their 70s throwbacks, which we got in 2018. These are pretty spectacular. Yeah, it's not that different from the regular home jersey, but Pittsburgh was most successful while wearing this, so I'll give it a pass for wanting to honor that period of their history. All four jerseys are paired with their iconic glossy black helmet with the logo only on the right side because when they first decided to have a helmet logo in 1962, they only put it on one side with the other side being blank, so fans could decide whether or not to keep the logo. Instead, it became the look for the Steelers that has carried over to today. While it'd be neat to have the logo on both sides from a non-Steeler fan's perspective, there's no way they'd actually do it. They're so far into tradition at this point in time that there's no going back. So overall, the Steelers are a classic, though I'm sure every Yinzer is praying Russ or Justin Fields are at least decent this year. Tomorrow, we will look at the Steelers' hated rival, the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore Ravens. Coming into the world in 1996 after Art Modell couldn't get a new stadium in Cleveland, the Ravens were the original iteration of the Cleveland Browns but left the team colors, records, and history behind in Cleveland for either a relocated or expansion team to become the new iteration of the Browns. Meanwhile, the Ravens retroactively became an expansion team for 1996 and thus makes them the youngest franchise in their division with a name inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's famous poem, The Raven. Of course, the Ravens also also replaced the Baltimore Colts, who relocated to Indianapolis after the 1983 season. Anyways, they've only ever had one uniform change, and that was in 1999 with a tweak in 2000, which was swapping their old helmet logo on the sleeves for their shield logo inspired by the Maryland state flag. Their purple home and white road have been phenomenal looks throughout their entire existence, including their black alternate, which the team introduced in 2004. Well, yeah, the Vikings have been purple long before the Ravens existed, the combination of purple and black on all of these is stunning, and they actually bother to emphasize purple, unlike the Colorado Rockies who share a similar color scheme. It's why those colors were chosen, to establish their identity as a dominant and ferocious team. All three are paired with their glossy black helmet with the bird on both sides, though it was always amusing how on the left side, the bee is facing the opposite direction from the rest of the logo. When it comes to pants, I'm a fan of every combination they've used except for one. The all-purple look because not only
only have they got another uniform setup similar to this, but I also find it to be boring. The main purple home for them never look right when paired with the purple pants. Speaking of all purple, their color rush introduced in 2016 has always been kind of mad to me as it's just their home purple but with gold numbers and matching pants. It was MIA last season, leading myself to assume that the team scrapped it. No, they did not. Instead, it's come back for the season paired with a matte purple helmet with a gold face mask and an alternate logo. This has honestly propelled my opinion on this uniform as now I like that it's more distinct and adds its own flavor to the team's regular lineup. If you couldn't guess, the Ravens are a modern classic. Maybe they don't need to do 1996 throwbacks after all, though it'd still be cool to see someday. Tomorrow we travel to the Factory of Sadness to examine the Ravens' sibling, the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns, debuting in 1946 and named after their first head coach Paul Brown with a color scheme of brown and orange, derived from Bowling Green who held Brown's training camp until 1951, Cleveland originally played in the long disbanded AAFC like the 49ers and switched to the NFL in 1950. The team would be suspended from 1996 to 1998 due to, like mentioned in yesterday's video, team owner Art Modell moved the team to Baltimore because he couldn't get a new stadium in Cleveland. The Browns would return in 1999 as an expansion team and reclaim their history, records, and colors from 1946 to 1995. Their uniforms were updated versions of their pre-relocation look, except with the TV numbers migrating from the sleeves to the top of the shoulders. They'd use this look with a tweak or two until a controversial uniform change in 2015. I'll give Nike some credit for attempting to make the most basic look in the NFL today more exciting, but it didn't last, and not just because this look is now associated with going 0-16 in 2017. The Browns would return to their senses in 2020, and much like the Bucks, they kept the redesigned helmet with the rest of the uniform returned back to their previous look. As a result, their brown home and white road are back to being clean looks. Is it basic? Yeah, but that's part of the charm. Same with the so ugly it's beautiful color scheme of brown and orange. Both are paired with their burnt orange matte helmet, which looks better than the old pumpkin shade they wore before 2015. Though this year, they They've changed the face mask from brown to white for the first time since 2005. I think it looks better as the white definitely pops better than the brown ever did. I do think the brown pants are unnecessary because when paired with the white jersey, it looks like they're wearing sweatpants. Now with alternates, Cleveland likes to alternate between which ones they wear as if they didn't get the memo that you could have two alternates per year. Last year and in 2021 when it was introduced, they wore their 1946 white throwbacks and even paired it with an alternate white helmet last year to reference their early days from 1946 to 1951, whereas their brown color rush, which debuted in 2018, has been used with the team every other year. The brown color rush is okay even if I'm not into solid orange numbers on a brown background. Their throwbacks, on the other hand, look cool and are distinguished enough in their lineup, but even still, just have both! 2018 was the first year we were allowed to wear two alternates. It sounds cliche to say it's such a Cleveland move to do this. A little update, but after originally recording this, the Browns announced that they're wearing their throwback with no mention of the color rush. It seems to me that the uniform has been dropped until further notice. But still, the Browns, like Tampa, are a good redesign overall, and hopefully they stick with this look. Tomorrow, we're heading to the jungle to look at another Paul Brown team, the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. After Art Modell fired Paul Brown as the head coach of the Cleveland Browns after the 1962 season, Brown wanted to get back at Modell in whichever way he could. Of course, the best way was through forming his own team, which came into fruition in 1968 for the American Football League. Behold the Cincinnati Bengals. Brown opted to go the AFL route as while he thought the league was inferior to the NFL, the talks of an NFL-AFL merger forced Paul to swallow his pride and have his new team join the AFL, plus they'd become an NFL team once the merger was completed by 1970, so I'd say it all worked out for him. He also chose a name that was used in the area before, so Brown decided to honor that OG Bengals team with a color scheme derived from what else? The Bengals' original uniforms were merely copied from the Browns until a much needed change in 1981. Forgot to mention there was a tweak in 1997 moving the TV numbers to the top of the shoulders and the full tiger on the sleeves. Their 2004 redesign would be an evolution 
evolution of it and then their 2021 redesign became an even further evolution. The black home looks sleek and immaculate in addition to the road white and orange alternate, all paired with their iconic orange helmet with black tiger stripes. I do think they could have added shoulder numbers, but I guess they look fine without them. Since he also added orange pants this year for an all orange look, I dig it and thankfully the Bengals use a darker orange that isn't jarring, but not gonna lie, I thought they looked like carrots at first. Still like the combo regardless. So what makes this work unlike Arizona's attempt to replace a Reebok uniform that came out around the same time? It's not a block of color for one, and the tiger stripes on both the helmet, shoulders, and pants do plenty to break things up. The number font is decent to look at, and the word mark isn't comically huge. TLDR, it's not a monochromatic snore fest like the Cardinals are. Lastly is their all-white color rush which debuted in 2016, originally with their standard orange helmet until 2022 ushered in the white alternate. This setup is meant to pay tribute to the Cincinnati Zoo's white tiger that they have and the white helmet does a fantastic job amplifying it. That said, if you paid attention last year, the Bengals didn't wear this jersey, but they did wear the white helmet with their regular all-white setup against the Rams and Jaguars. Apparently it was because the striping on the Color Rush's shoulders was outdated, though last year Nike changed to the Fuse template and probably couldn't make the Bengals Color Rush design work on it from what it sounds like to me. Hopefully it returns soon. As a result, the Bengals needed special permission from the league to wear their white helmets with their normal white jerseys and have it designated as an alternate itself. Very strange, but that's the NFL for you. So overall, the Bengals are a good redesign that I hope remains for years to come. That concludes the AFC North. Tomorrow we begin the AFC East with the New England Patriots. New England Patriots. Forewarning, all but one AFC East team debuted in 1960, meaning three teams are the oldest in their division. Anyways, debuting in 1960, the team was originally known as the Boston Patriots for the first decade of their existence until 1971 when the team moved into Foxborough Stadium after trying a couple different stadiums in Boston after leaving Fenway for somewhere bigger. The name was picked in a contest by the locals as a reference to Colonial America and the Revolutionary War, and thus their color scheme is self-explanatory. Of course, the Pats were originally red like the British Army that fought the American colonists, who wore blue in the Revolutionary War. This would go on until 1993 along with a failed relocation to St. Louis, though the blue would darken to navy in 2000 and the next year, the Patriots dynasty began. Literally a month after Brady signed with Tampa Bay in February 2020, the Patriots rolled out new uniforms. Kind of. I guess since the Brady era was over, the team didn't want to possibly taint that look. Kinda like how you know the Capitals will do a redesign once Ovechkin retires. Anyways, the Blue Home originally started life as their alternate color rush uniform in 2016, and it was okay as an alternate, but as a main uniform, I'm not feeling it. This feels like the Patriots trying to be the Seahawks, but whereas Seattle sported matching pants with their previous look to ease us into their Nike redesign, the Patriots never wore matching pants regularly resulting in many people including fans say they look like blueberries. I do dig the shoulder stripes that mimic their classic look in red, but no TV numbers? Really? I think I prefer to replace the sleeve logos with some numbers, honestly. The jersey thankfully has alternate gray pants which were introduced in 2022 and have been worn three times with the team going one and two in them. Frankly, I wish they were THE full-time pants. The white road is better in that the jersey and pants are different colors, though my other complaint I have with the blue one remain. Both are paired with their silver helmet with the Flying Elvis logo, that's what they call it, which still looks awesome regardless. Lastly, their red throwback which lately has been the team's only bright spot. This also has an alternate white helmet and overall the whole package remains to brighten the team's uniform lineup, but frankly the Patriots deserve a redesign instead of forcing a color rush uniform to be the main uniform. It's so boring that it'll make the Jets, Bills, and Dolphins fans beg for the Brady uniform forms back, which I think is still a possibility. Tomorrow we travel to the classic Boston rival in the New York Jets. New York Jets. Coming into the world in 1960 as the Titans of New York, no really, the team would become known as the Jets in 1963 as their original Titans name was nearly a ripoff of the Giants. Ironic that they've shared a stadium for 40 years now. The team name was chosen as new owner Sonny Werblin wanted a name that rhymed with 
Mets, and the team also played near LaGuardia Airport in Queens. The colors were also changed from navy and gold to green and white because Werblin was born on St. Patrick's Day. Over the years, the Jets will have periods where they're a white helmet team and others where they're a green helmet team, and currently they've got green helmets. The original green helmet look ran from 1978 to 1997, and they attempted to modernize that look in 2019, but obviously it wasn't good enough to stick around. Me personally, I didn't think their 2019 redesign was that bad, even though I also thought it made them look like the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. These uniforms introduced for this year most closely resembled the 1978 to 1986 version of the green helmet uniforms due to the darker green being used, and as a result, the home green and white road are both faithful recreations of those uniforms as well as our nice clean looks, which definitely beat the previous design which already looks dated by comparison. Of course, the white jersey debuted last year as the legacy white throwback, and I only thought it was okay as it wasn't a 100% faithful recreation due to still using the regular metallic Jets helmet instead of a lighter matte one. But pairing it up with a similar jersey, it brings my opinion of it up now that it's a regular uniform instead of an alternate. And hey, it looks a whole lot better than the Patriots color rush, that's for sure. Their metallic green helmet remains from their previous design, albeit with a different logo. But it still looks good paired with the regular uniforms. The Jets also kept the black alternate, but changed to this template, and it looks super sleek. I wasn't sure if it translates to this template, but it did, surprisingly. And finally, they've got a throwback to their 60s road white helmet uniform, or if you want to be that guy like I'm about to, it's throwing back to 2018. I mean, it is a neat addition, but like I mentioned, the last time the Jets wore this uniform was less than a decade ago. Yeah, it's more so the Broadway Joe version of the jersey, due to the lack of the logo that it's 1998 returned turn featured, but my point still stands. Overall, the Jets are a good redesign. Tomorrow we'll look at a team that actually plays in the state of New York, the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills. Did you guess that they debuted in 1960? Cause you'd be right! However, unlike the Patriots and Jets, the Bills have kept the same name ever since their inception. Said name was adopted from a previous AAFC franchise and was named after Buffalo Bill Cody. Their color scheme was originally blue and silver like the Lions until it was changed in 1962 to red, white, and blue to match the AHL's Buffalo Bisons. Similar to the Jets, the Bills have had a white helmet era from 1962 to 1983 after having silver helmets in their first couple seasons and a red helmet era from 1984 to 2010. They've been back to white helmets since 2011, which came with a redesign meant to be an update of their 1975 to 1983 look, coinciding with the last year of Reebok holding the NFL license. Their blue home and white road were major improvements over their unfortunate 2002 Reebok redesign which only looks worse as each day passes, giving Buffalo a classic and timeless look that they needed. Introduced in 2016 was their all red color rush which I love with it emphasizing the red in their color scheme. All three are paired with a glossy white helmet, though many including myself wish that either the color rush had a red helmet or even that a red helmet was what they wore regularly. Yeah the white is cool but the red helmet is also also associated with the best years for the franchise, even if it also resulted in four straight Super Bowl losses. 2022 saw Josh Allen tease a red helmet in training camp, last year a blue one, and then this year a black one with the standing Buffalo logo. Are you gonna have an alternate or not, guys? They used to have a throwback to their 1964 to 1973 road uniforms with the standing Buffalo on the helmet, which I always suspected was why they went with a white helmet, but it hasn't been seen on the field since 2021. I couldn't find a reason why they got rid of it, but I suspect it was because the jersey itself wasn't that different from what they wore on a regular basis. Since the Bills redesign is over a decade old, they landed decent, though I'd like to see a red helmet return to their lineup even if it's part-time. Tomorrow we conclude the AFC East with the Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins. Coming into the world in 1966 and thus making them the youngest franchise in their division, the Dolphins were Florida's first professional team since the Miami Seahawks of the AAFC in 1946. With a very Floridian name and color scheme, the Dolphins have always been able to be one of the more unique teams in the league as no one else in the big four leagues has a color scheme of teal and orange. Sure, plenty of teams have had either of those colors, but not both at the same time. These uniforms were a constant evolution from 1966 to 20. 
2012 until a controversial uniform change in 2013. The teal home and white road have always looked spectacular, even if they only wore their regular teal once last season. But the biggest controversy is the helmet. It's still a glossy white, but the logo was changed. I think it looks fine, but I'm not opposed to changing it back. The teal also used to be more on the blue side, whereas the 2013 redesign made it more of a greenish teal. In addition, Miami was the first team to introduce home and road throwbacks before the Giants and Niners would do so later. The teal throwback would debut in 2015 while the white throwback came out in 2019, but honestly it always felt like these have coexisted for the same amount of time. They are both phenomenal recreations of their uniforms from 1966, even down to the helmet, and many argue they should wear these full time. I'm fine with them staying as alternates as overall I think the Dolphins have earned their bump up to decent, though I can't help but think that one day they will return back to their previous logo and maybe go with something else. This concludes the AFC East, tomorrow we'll start the AFC South with a former AFC East team, the Indianapolis Colts. Indianapolis Colts, coming into the world in 1953, the Colts are the oldest franchise in their division and were originally known as the Baltimore Colts. The name came from a previous football franchise of the same name that called Baltimore home, making the current Colts the second of their kind. The name references the Preakness Stakes, an annual horse race held at Pimlico Racecourse in Baltimore. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. The color scheme of blue and white traces back to the Dayton Triangle slash Dallas Texans franchise that the Colts inherited as the NFL sold that franchise assets to Baltimore. Anywho, their uniforms haven't changed since 1957 with last names added in 1970. Of course, as everyone knows, in the middle of the night in 1984, team owner Bob Ursay moved the Colts to Indianapolis after not being able to get a new stadium in Baltimore. The team would move into the then recently constructed Hoosier Dome for the 1984 season. Of course, in 1996, Art Modell would screw over the city of Cleveland and the Ravens brought NFL football back to the city of Baltimore. Back to the Colts themselves, their latest uniform update came in 2020 with a new horseshoe inspired number font and a dash of black added to the Nike logo so Indy can say, hey look, black is in our color scheme. Anyways, the home blue and white road have always looked spectacular and remain as one of the few teams to keep the numbers on the sleeves. It's a recognizable and clean look that anyone and everyone could get on board with, unless you're from Baltimore. I do like their new font as it's more distinct than the plain Jane block numbers. Both are paired with a glossy white helmet featuring their famous horseshoe. They ditched their mediocre color rush after the 2022 season and introduced the Indiana Knights uniform in its place. This uniform is paired with a glossy black helmet and has many black highlights and honestly looking at it, this might even be just a bit darker than their regular blue. The team boasts that it's meant to represent the Indiana Knights sky even though A, they have yet to wear these for a night game or even a late afternoon game, and B, this was totally an excuse to have a uni with more black on it after you added it to your color scheme. I still don't think it's bad though, I can see why most aren't into it. Alternatively, they also have their 1956 throwbacks which they've had since 2021. Now, this is definitely their most exciting throwback that they've ever had, though if you look really close, it's the Niners jerseys but in blue. Those 56 jerseys even had the numbers on the sleeve instead of the top of the shoulders, but I assume the Colts and Nike made that executive decision to try and differentiate this from their regular home jersey. So even with lukewarm alternates, the Colts are an absolute classic because while alternates come and go, the main uniform set remains. Tomorrow we'll be in the Music City to examine the Tennessee Titans. Tennessee Titans. This team debuted in 1960 originally as the Houston Oilers before moving to Nashville in 1997 because owner Bud Adams couldn't get a new stadium in Houston, though the team wouldn't be renamed to the Titans until 1999. Heck, they didn't even play in Nashville in their first season in the state. They were in Memphis. Anyways, the Titans' first look lasted from 1999 to 2017, and in that span of time, the team flip-flopped between wearing navy or light blue, or Titans blue as they call it, with the team even eliminating the navy jersey from 2009 to 2012. I'll admit I was soft on their 2018 redesign in last year's critique, but since then I've had second thoughts. 
The Home Navy, White Road, and Titan's Blue alternate all look okay, but I don't care about the number font being used no matter what meaning Nike says it has, or even how they made the top of the shoulders resemble a sword tip. Having the Nike logos in red almost seems like a last second addition as if someone at Nike forgot that their logo has red in it and had to put it in somehow. And while the glossy navy helmet looks fine when paired with the navy home, it looks so out of place with the white and light blue jerseys. At least with the old design, the white helmet works since white is a neutral color and goes with anything whether it's a light or dark color. This never looked right to me no matter which way I looked at it. This could have been the grittier reboot that the Titans need but ended up being flat and forgettable. The one upside to their uniform set, however, is the 84 to 97 Oilers throwback introduced last year. You know it's that time period because of how bright the blue is and the white helmets. This was a uniform I personally wanted them to go back to for the longest time and for a while made me wish that they stuck with the white helmets before the NFL allowed alternate helmets again. However, for their main lineup and accompanying alternate, the Titans land at meh. I wouldn't be surprised if this uniform uniform set is up for a redesign in the near future, much like how their stadium is about to be replaced. Tomorrow we're making one last trip to Florida to check out the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville Jaguars. Along with the Carolina Panthers, Jacksonville's first season was in 1995, but unlike Carolina, the team has had uniform changes and even tried emphasizing black and gold more than their tried and true teal at one point in time. Their original uniforms lasted from 1995 to 2008, with a number tweak in 1997. A Reebok redesign that lasted from 2009 to 2012, and their puke-tastic 2013 to 2017 Nike redesign where owner Shahid Khan wanted to emphasize gold more than teal with the only upside being the updated logo. And the gold used looked like diarrhea. Yuck! The team would get a much needed redesign in 2018, and while I was all over this in 2018, I've since taken the blinders off to see what this truly is, compensating way too much. The 2013 Nike redesign was very complex while the 2018 redesign goes for simplicity to where it's minimalist. The teal home and white road look okay, though this is begging for more details to fill in the blank space. There is some black around the sleeves and collar to help break things up, but these could use some more detail. Maybe some shoulder stripes or even have the leaping jaguar on the sleeves like they used to have. And outside the logo, there's no gold present at all. They definitely went out of their way to distance this design from the previous one. Their numbers from a distance look one layer, but they're actually two layered. It's just that the team decided to have the bottom layer be the same color as the jersey. Why? Why not just have single layered numbers? Or if you're gonna have more than one layer, make the bottom a different color so it stands out. The one thing I do like the most is their glossy black helmet. The only way was up after that ugly two-tone one that they tried. Sadly, the same problems from the home and road jerseys extend to their black alternate, but starting this year, they're pairing it up with a white helmet. I guess for all the teams that brought in black helmets, the actual black helmet team had to go in the opposite direction, especially when they've only ever had black helmets. Maybe it'll look better in action, but this comes off as doing it cause you can. Like Tennessee, their brightest spot is their throwback, specifically the version introduced in 1997. Not only is it a phenomenal recreation of it by Nike, but it emphasizes my points further. Look at all the detail on this and then compare it to the lack of detail on the main threads. Now I'm not saying they should go back to this look full time, I'm just saying that the team should have taken more inspiration from this rather than putting in no detail as a response to one of the ugliest uniforms of all time. As a whole, Jacksonville is meh as there are ways to improve them, but until then, it's no wonder people don't care about these uniforms. Tomorrow we'll look at the last team to join the league, the Houston Texans. Houston Texans. After the departure of the Oilers after the 1996 season, the expansion Texans brought football back to Houston in 2002, making the team the youngest franchise in both their division and the league overall. Houston underwent a redesign for this year after having their old thread since their inaugural season, and I think for the most part, it turned out good for the team with some aspects that I question. The home navy is a spectacular update as I noted last year how their old home jersey was showing 
its age. I dig the TV numbers migrating to the top of the shoulders and having the logo fill in the space left behind on the sleeves. The number font has been updated and the collar is a lot less red, but a good update. If I was tasked to redesign the Texans, this is about what I'd come up with. The White Road has a different design language and starts to give me flashbacks to how the Cardinals handled their recent redesign. On this one, I dig how the horns wrap around the sleeves to create sleeve stripes, but no numbers on the shoulders? Really, you're just gonna leave them blank? Come on! What's so wrong putting numbers up there? At least both are still paired with a nice glossy navy helmet that looks unchanged from before. The all red alternate is essentially a red version of the white road, except with a red helmet. Unlike the old red helmet, this one has the outline of the horns on the helmet and stands out among other similar helmets. I just don't care for everything being red, but thank god Houston also showed this paired with the white pants, so that helps to soothe my eyes. Bulls hating red is a myth, but if it were true, seeing this makes me sympathize with them. I feel as though the previous all red look worked better with the numbers being white instead of navy. People have gotten on to me for not being into the all red look, maybe I just need to get used to it, I don't know. And finally, the H-Town alternate that they're dubbing as both City Edition and a Color Rush. I guess this does look similar to their old Color Rush uniforms, but in that case, is the all red a Color Rush 2? As for City Edition, we don't need a third league using this idea. It's getting stale in both the NBA and MLB, what makes Nike think it'll be great in the NFL? At that point, you're oversaturating it. People got on to me for referring to the light blue used as Oilers blue instead of H-Town blue, but come on, what team in that area is this color associated with? And looking up the Houston and flag to see where this shade of blue derived from was ridiculous because every single result had a different shade of blue. Does Houston itself even know what H-Town blue is? Back on track, the alternate H logo is on the darkest possible blue helmet and it looks neat, but the rest feels uninspired. I can't help but think that if Nike continues this in the NFL, half the jerseys will be blue or black like an MLB. Frankly, if there was any shade of blue to predominantly use on this, why not the H-Town blue? Or was that too similar to the Oilers? Would the Titans have said something, especially after bringing in Oilers throwbacks? However, despite my criticisms, the Texans are a good redesign, though I can see improvements being made in the near future. And unlike Tennessee and Jacksonville, the jerseys on their own are fine and far from boring. This concludes the AFC South and tomorrow will be in the final stretch with the AFC West starting with the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. All four teams in this division debuted in 1960 so I won't be going over oldest and youngest franchises. With that out of the way, our back-to-back -back defending champs. Someone had to take up the mantle of the most dominant franchise after Brady left New England. Back on topic, the franchise was originally known as the Dallas Texans until moving to Kansas City in 1963, and the only thing that changed on the uniforms was the helmet logo. Of course, Kansas City Texans sounds wrong, so team founder and owner Lamar Hunt changed the name to Chiefs, after then Kansas City Mayor Harold Rowe Bartle, whose nickname was Chief. And since then, the uniforms have evolved over the years, with sleeve stripes added in 1968 and migrating the TV numbers from the sleeves to the top of the shoulders like the Bears. The home red and white road are timeless, clean looks that have and will continue to fit in no matter what decade it may be. It transcends time itself. Since 2007, Kansas City added a Lamar Hunt patch on the front after his death that year featuring Hunt's initials and the original AFL logo as Hunt also co-founded the AFL in addition to his own team. There are variations of the two uniforms such as the Chiefs All Red Color Rush, which I've never liked, or the All White look, which is okay but is begging for red pants to break up all that white. Owner Clark Hunt has made it clear that he's not interested interested in alternates for the team, but maybe a Dallas Texans throwback? Have a jersey that puts the TV numbers on the sleeves, swap the logo on the helmet, and you're done. The only drawbacks are having a team in Missouri with the state of Texas on their helmets, yeah that's accurate but still, and possibly the lack of differentiation between the regular Chiefs home jersey and a throwback version. But if the Colts can get away with it, who's to say Kansas City can't? If you couldn't tell, the Chiefs are an absolute classic and remain as one of the best looks in sports. No way should this ever get redesigned. Now since there's not much left of September, come back later today and we'll travel a little further west to examine the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos. Denver came into the world in 1960 wearing brown and yellow, a color scheme I'm sure their 
rivals think described them the best in the post-Manning days. With a name coming from a Name the Team contest, Denver would replace those excrement colors with orange in 1962 until ushering their most iconic look in 1968 after featuring no helmet logo the year prior. This is the look that defined the Denver Broncos all the way up until a controversial redesign in 1997. This, funny enough, was done by Nike and was the first example of the uniform maker putting in their input. Needless to say, seeing navy replace not just the royal blue but also the orange ushered in the Broncos' very own dark gray reboot, which was successful in its first two seasons seeing them win back-to-back -back Super Bowls. This would of course remain until this year, where Nike redesigned their first redesign, and I'll come out and say it, I'm not a fan. Yeah, after the Bowman estate sold the Broncos, a uniform change was inevitable, but that's no excuse, and Denver is far from the only team to have this happen after an ownership change. It's very fitting that the day this design was released, the Broncos traded for Zach Wilson. Two L's in one day, that's impressive. While yeah, the previous design was showing its age, was this seriously the best that Nike could do? The orange home and white road are so bland. Okay, I dig the sleeve stripes representing mountains. That's kind of cool. But no shoulder numbers? Why? And oh god, the orange pants with the white road. You know, at least when Cleveland does that, it works because they've got orange helmets, whereas yours looks like the result of a random uniform generator. It was as if Nike was playing Madden and decided to base a uniform around a Madden relocation uniform. If this was a college team like UTSA, maybe I cut them some slack, but college standards don't translate to success in the pros. I wouldn't even use this for a Blue Mountain State reboot. Both are paired with a matte navy helmet which looks awful. If they kept the stripe in the middle, I'd be fine, but they migrated it to the back for some bizarre reason. Seeing this helmet makes me wish they switched back to royal blue, because seeing the dark matte navy along with the orange is jarring. If they kept the orange stripe down the middle from their previous design, I wouldn't be complaining about this, because at least there's orange going from the helmet to the jersey besides the logo's mane. The navy alternate suffers from the same problems as the other two, except this one is paired with a white helmet. All I can say that is putting me in mind of the Seattle Dragons. And that wasn't any better than this. Speaking of Seattle, I imagine they went with a white helmet for this because it looked too much like the Seahawks if this was paired with a regular helmet. The only bright side to their new uniform set this year is their throwbacks to their classic orange bringing back the days of Elway. This actually looks like a completed uniform because it is. Many are speculating that the Broncos will change to these after the required five seasons are up if fans continue to hate the new main uniform unis, and honestly they should have just gone with these instead. The helmet logo still looks phenomenal and they also updated the uniform so the TV numbers are on the shoulders instead of the sleeves. Why didn't they go with this? I don't know, too easy to wow fans? Wanting to keep the 1997 logo? But there's one thing that makes this fall flat on its face. The 1997 redesign was meant as the dark gray reboot of the Broncos, however once the Nike era started, Denver swapped the orange and navy jerseys around so that orange was the main defeating the purpose of this rendition being a dark gritty reboot. And for this new redesign, the Broncos and Nike have doubled down on this philosophy. Basically, the Broncos are the DC Extended Universe. So overall, the Broncos need another redesign and sadly it'll be a while for these unis. Maybe Bo Nix does some good in them? We'll have to wait and see. Tomorrow we travel to Vegas to examine the Las Vegas Raiders. Las Vegas Raiders. The autumn win first debuted as the Oakland Raiders in 1960. However, the Raiders were originally black and gold like a certain rival of theirs in the 70s. Their name was the result of a name the team contest, however the winner was originally the Oakland Seniors. Raiders had finished in third and the team quickly changed to that after people instantly made fun of the name Seniors. We wouldn't see silver until 1963 with 1965 giving us what the Raiders still wear to this very day. It's a look that survived the move to LA in 1982, the move back to Oakland in 1995, and more recently the move to Las Vegas in 20. 20. So why does it work? Well on the surface the home black and white road are pretty basic looking, however it's the color combination of black and silver that makes this work. Contrast this with their arch rival the Chiefs, who are bright and colorful. The two teams look like good and evil duking it out, or if you're a Raiders fan and think the Chiefs are evil, Batman and Joker. 
black is such a powerful color that even other teams across the country will try to add it to varying success. It's that cool. Why do you think bikers wear it? And like the Colts, Vegas keeps the TV numbers to the side because if there's anyone out there that'll keep it old school, it's them. They also have a throwback which references their road jersey from 1970 as the helmet still features their current logo like that old uni, though this originally started life as their color rush in 2016. However, the team dropped the matching white pants after the 2017 season. All three are of course paired with their metallic silver helmet and you can't mistake this for anything else. So no doubt about it, the Raiders are a classic. Later today we will conclude this series with the Los Angeles Chargers. Los Angeles Chargers. It's still easy to forget that they were the LA Chargers in their 1960 debut, especially since they moved quickly to San Diego the very next year in 1961 due to LA being oversaturated with sports teams. The team name was the result of a name the team contest with the inspiration being how fans at games would yell charge. You know, Na -na 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 -na. Charge. Of course, thanks to the mighty dollar and the city of San Diego not building a new stadium for Dean Spanos, the Chargers moved back to LA. When it came to uniforms, the Chargers started out light and got darker as the franchise went on. After some variations of powder blue in the beginning, with the blue changing to royal in 1974, famously worn by the likes of Dan Fouts and Kellen Winslow, and a navy in 1985 with the 1988 redesign becoming recognizable by the likes of Junior Seau and Ladanian Tomlinson. Their 2007 redesign, I feel, tried to combine their gritty Frank Miller Navy reboot with their Adam West Powder Blue Classics, hence the white helmet, but looking back, it hasn't aged as well as one would hope. We get a sneak preview of what the guys at Nike were cooking up in the lab and made the powder blue jersey the main home uniform instead of the navy like in previous years. This resulted in the team's 2020 redesign bringing the best of each era of the Chargers and arguably being the best redesign that Nike has ever done. The powder blue home and white road are modern updates of their 66 to 73 uniforms and man are they stunning. Powder blue with the sunshine gold, as they call it, perfectly complement each other. I do prefer the gold and yellow pants with the home blue because the color combination pleases my eyes. It's fine either way on the road white. The royal blue color rush is equally beautiful in addition to the navy blue color rush, but I would like to make one addition to their lineup. So, all four uniforms are paired with their glossy white helmet with the player's number on it, just like the way the team did until 1974. This is why I'm not ragging on them emitting shoulder numbers, because the helmet number is the TV number, and it looked ridiculous. Redundant. Just ask the football team. However, I would love to see a navy blue alternate helmet paired with both color rush uniforms. The royal blue one can keep the yellow face mask in keeping with how that uniform looked, and man is the navy one begging for the navy helmet with navy face mask combo. Changing the lightning bolt to navy simply won't do. Plus, like mentioned earlier, I was never a fan of having the white helmet with the navy jersey. Why they haven't rectified this yet, I have no idea. Here's to hoping that this is changed next year. If you couldn't guess, the Chargers are a good redesign and, dare I say, are the gold standard for handling redesigns for Nike. Nike is more than capable of making amazing uniforms and this proves it. It's just sometimes I wish they were more consistent. That'll do it for this season, but it's far from over for me. As promised, I'm doing the NHL and NBA season videos in this format, though you're probably watching this in the future, so you already know this. Needless to say, I'll be busy producing new content for you guys. I do plan on doing a live stream in October as I want to rank every FBS college football uniform. I plan to turn that into a series, but quickly realized that it would have been impossible given my current schedule. Plus, it'll be different, and I want to do something special for you guys, so be sure to enable notifications for that. As for the NFL, I just hope the minimalist approach to uniforms ends soon as in the mix of things, they've turned out fantastic redesigns that are faithful updates to what came before. I've always liked Nike and I want to see them churn out good stuff. Anyways, be sure to leave a comment, follow me on Twitter, follow me on TikTok, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all later.